It's time to go over the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the United States of America via Skype and speak to uh, dog expert Jeff Morgan. He's the author of the book Happy Dog 101, 101 Tips for Raising Dogs. Good afternoon to you. Hi, good afternoon. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. And good. T- and today's subject on dogs is? Is bad dog. Bad dog. You're a bad dog. That's bad, that's, that's right. a really bad thing to say to your dog. I never say uh, bad dog to my that's dogs. That's right. That's right. And I, and I said that I, I gave the title of this uh, section on, on the on uh, uh, you know how people punish their dogs and and they mistreat them uh, when they do things while they were out uh, on purpose. I use the term bad dog because there really is no such thing as a bad dog. But people use that term so loosely. Um, but you know, a dog, it, it's not responsible for its own behavior. So if a dog does something bad, then what does it say about the owner? So you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so basically the topic is do not punish your dog over what he did while you were out. Okay. Very so good. many dogs, many dogs, if left to roam, and this is really popular thing to do. Many dogs, if left to roam the house freely while the owners are out, may do things that the owner doesn't like. That's so, very correct. Like going, like jumping onto the sofa. Right. We, we've just so got to leave their hair all over the sofa. Yeah. Uh, maybe not the pincher with his little hairs, but maybe the other dog that you have. Yeah, but, definitely. <laughs> you know, people may come home to find, uh, you know, pee on the floor or a pillow skillfully opened up with its contents spread out over all over the room masterfully. And yes, uh, right. some may find the trash can tipped over and its contents spread out all over the kitchen. But you know, it's so it's it's really common for people to come home and see this and get angry with the dog and punish the dog by swatting it or rubbing its nose in what it did. But this is a very ineffective response to your dog's behavior while you're out. Mm. You see, the dogs can't make the correlation between what they did while you were gone and why they're being punished at the present moment. Because mm, they don't, they do they? They don't have sense of time, do they, dogs? They don't have a sense of time, even though they do have memory. But they can't make the connection with why they're being punished now and what they did while they were doing it. Okay, so, so, so what so you're saying dogs, is you can punish a dog while they're doing it. If you catch a dog maybe peeing in the house, so you can straight away kind of punish the dog. Yeah, well, I like to use the word discipline because punishment discipline. kind of gives a connotation of no, aggressive uh, uh, yeah. behavior towards the dog. But, you know, you can discipline your dog only if you catch him in the act. Mm. So if your dog is sniffing around looking for a place to pee and you give a sharp no and you slightly startle the dog before it actually does it, and then it stops in its tracks. Then you go and you take the dog outside and it pees. That's a proper response to your dog about to pee in your home. Now, if your dog is actually in the process of going, you know what? You kind of missed it. Let him finish and then, and then you know, just keep an eye on him. But most of the reasons why dogs do things at home uh, when we're not around that we don't like is because they're unsupervised. They feel free. And a free-roaming dog starts to exhibit more natural behaviors that it would exhibit in the wild. Hunting, searching, seeking, relieving itself away from the bed that it sleeps in. Not necessarily outside, but away from. Mm. So, so the dog that feels free-roaming will usually exhibit behaviors that seem more uh, primal, more natural to a dog that would be living, say, with other dogs outside. Okay, how I have I've been thinking all this time while you've been talking, how can you teach a dog that when you're not in the house to behave in a proper manner? Yeah, well, this is a good question because uh, when dogs are not supervised, they have to feel restricted. They have to be restricted. So what most people do in the United States, it's actually very popular to crate train a dog, meaning you have a crate or a small kennel, and when the dog is not being supervised, the dog goes into that kennel and rests and waits for the owners to come home. Uh, and so when the dog goes into this small space, instinctually the dog won't want to pee or poo where it lays, where it rests. Mm-hmm. So the dog will want to go out somewhere else and do that. 
So if a dog is well crate trained, then the dog will hold it in until the owners come back. Now how, how long can a dog hold it in? I mean, sometimes owners go out for four, five, six, even eight hours a day. That's right. So that in that case, and I'll get back to that in a second, but dogs can hold it in for, for, for really long times. I've seen dogs hold, hold it in for, and I've heard stories also of dogs holding it in for more than 24 hours. Wow. But that's, a, that's an extreme case of the owner uh, uh, being called off to something or an emergency and they, and they can't uh, come home to take the dog out. Uh, and they've come home to find that the dog has been holding it in the whole time. But uh, most dogs uh, that are adult dogs, not puppies, but most dogs that are adult can hold it in for six to eight hours, maybe even 10 hours at a time at night, uh, and then sh a little bit shorter periods during the day when the body's more active. Um, but uh, if it's a puppy, for instance, then, then the person's going to have to change their schedule in a pretty major way and bring that puppy outside every two hours or so to, to do its business. Uh, because puppies need to go all the time and and you can use a crate training method to teach the puppy to start to hold it in but when the puppy's really young it's going to need to go out really really often but uh, if people don't want to crate train their dogs they can simply put their dog in a smaller space where they don't necessarily have access to other rooms of the house they can put the dog bed in that space some people use a playpen, some people use a mud room, some people use a, a, a laundry room, and this is where the dog waits. Now, what you asked earlier is really important. What if the people go out of the house and they're out at work eight hours a day? Well, we are now responsible for this dog. This dog is dependent upon us completely, and we have to expect that if we bring a dog into our home, our life is going to change. Something about our daily schedule has to change. Otherwise, the dog is in your home for completely selfish reasons, and then you're not actually fulfilling the dog's needs, which is extremely important. Uh, I, 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 I never stop stressing the fact that when someone brings a dog into their home, their life has to change, and they have to rise to the occasion and still fulfill the dog's needs. So if you're going out for eight hours a day, you're going to have to bring a dog walker in. You're going to have to have someone of the family come in and take the dog out to play in the yard, feed it in the middle of the day, bring it back into its crate or into its small space. The dog is going to need some sort of relief or activity in the middle of the day. And some people even bring their dog to daycare when they go out for long hours of the day. But that's part of the responsibility of having a dog and having a child even. So we all know as, as parents, I'm a parent of two wonderful boys, they have their own special needs. So my life has changed to accommodate their needs. And I look at dogs exactly the same way. If a dog comes into my home, I have to give them what they need to accommodate their needs and fulfill them so they have a great life. So ways to avoid damage, uh, uh, destruction, peeing in the house when, when people are gone is to confine the dog to a smaller space or crate while they're gone. Uh, and make sure the dog gets plenty of outings and exercise in between. So if you're going out for the day, make sure your dog gets a nice walk in the morning, a lot of playtime, something that actually drains the energy. And so the dog can actually accept going into rest mode and waiting for you. So it's really important to understand that dogs need to learn how to wait for their owners when the owners go out of the house. No, ro no roaming the house, no freedom. They have to learn to wait. And one of the best ways to teach a dog to wait is by getting it used to that small space that it waits in for your return while you're at home. So while you're at home, train the dog to be in that space while you're roaming the house. So the dog knows that it kind of just goes in and out throughout the day into this space. And I'm not talking for hours. I might be talking about 20 minutes, 30 minutes, an hour when you're, when you're upstairs showering and can't uh, uh, supervise the dog. But it does no good to punish the dog over what he did while you were out. They can't make the correlation. And I'll finish with this. Some people think that the dog knows what it did because when I come home, that dog goes and hides and then I find the pee. And that it, it, it's, it's a common thing to assume that the dog makes the correlation between what it did at, while, while you were gone and why it's being punished. But it doesn't. What, it, what you've done ha is you've conditioned the dog that when you come home and start looking for something or you come home and you're not happy or you come home and you assume that the dog did something, the dog senses your mood and remembers the time that you punished it under that same circumstance. So it has nothing to do with what the dog did when it was peeing 
It has everything to do with how it feels when you come home and you start looking for something. Mm, very, very interesting. Yep. Uh, uh, just give you a website. Great. www.jeffmorgannow.com. Thanks a lot, Jeff. Speak to you soon. All right, Richard.